Hi everyone. I want to make this quick video here early in the morning. I have to get up and go get a lot of stuff done today, but I have to make this video. I want to talk to you about a particular issue that some of us know about, but too many people don't really know about and are not really considering it and or preparing. Okay, water. Water storage. Water shortage. A lot of people do not consider this because they believe it to be something that could never happen, especially here in America. Unfortunately, unfortunately, many people believe that no matter what happens, water will keep coming out that tap. And that's not the truth. That is far from the truth. In this video, I'm going to quickly review with you various facts you might want to consider, things you might not know, things you might need to really consider doing and doing as soon as possible. You must have water. Listen, you're not planning on living very long if you don't have backup water reserves, extra water on hand. You can't live very long without water. Three days average. By two and a half days with no fluids, with no water, you already begin to start suffering, even mental decline, panic. Not to, not to, not to fail to mention, of course, discomfort, but I'm talking about more than discomfort. I'm talking about confusion, the inability to rationalize, um, incredible aggression, anger, along with cardio issues. A lot of people, especially if you're older and extremely young, will undergo extreme cardio symptoms from going without fluids past two and a half days. The blood gets too thick, the heart has to strain and beat harder to attempt to manage the oxygen levels in the body, in the brain, especially which that starts to decline. The valves in the heart will start to not properly shut, which adds more strain to the heart and leads to stroke. The need for water is paramount. So in this video, let me run through a couple of things here. And I'm going to show you some things that I've learned and what I'm doing to prepare my family. Because many people think, well, they're okay because they have a, you know, a, a well or they're near a freshwater creek or stream or river. And truth be told, that's not good enough. Why am I saying that? Because you should have two or three or four different sources of water different ways to get water because if your main one falls and fails on you if you have no backup you're 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 in trouble having a having a well does not guarantee you're going to have water most of these um wells are electric powered for getting that water what happens if you have no power not only that but the way they drill wells today and have been for at least a decade at least they make it so narrow and they dump it in the ground just low enough to touch the water, the water line. Okay, so what happens if the water table drops? Then your pipe doesn't go in. Back in the day, they'd put it at least six, six feet into the water so that even if the water levels underground dropped, they still could get water. Today, probably have a six inch give where if the water drops by six inches, you can still kind of get it. What happens if there's earthquakes and then the water gets drained out into some other portion of land? Think about that, because I already know, and of course, biblically, we're anticipating a massive worldwide earthquake. Do you expect to be able to really get water from your well after that? Right now, there's severe droughtage problems, shortage of water, the water table is dropping in various places, it's really bad. So that's just concerning a well. What about if you live near a creek or a fresh water stream or whatnot? Do you think that that would be safe later when everybody else is gonna be running to that particular source of water and many people are like animals, they're beasts, and they will defecate in that water and throw their filth in that water and they don't care about people downstream. Do you really wanna be relying on that exclusively, especially whenever stuff hits the fan? You must have multiple sources of water. Let's review some, some in information here. Now, emergency water preparedness. 
The average person uses approximately 100 gallons a day of water. This figure takes into consideration the frequent toilet flushes, 9 to 12 a day, washing machine use for washing clothes, and washing dishes, dishwashers. Um, also, 32 gallons of water is used approximately per bath, per person. Not to exclude how most average shower use, which is about 10 minutes long, uses 22, approximately 22 gallons per shower. So we go through a lot of water. It's, it's, it's abundant. It's not an issue usually. So in an emergency, how, what would that look like to ration water, to be sparing? How much water would you need to store up and or prepare for and prepare to be able to gather later during times of no water? In emergency, one person needs to drink half a gallon of water per day. This does not include wash water for the body and for cleaning pots or even cleaning and preparing food. So for an emergency, a family of four people needs approximately three gallons of drinking water per day and two gallons for washing pots and cleaning the body, etc. Now, why did I put three gallons? Because it's half a gallon per person, so that makes it two gallons of drinking water, excuse me, and three gallons for washing pots and cleaning the body, okay? For a total of five gallons per day of water for, for preparedness comfort. And it's that's being very sparing, not very comfortable, but at least minimal comfort. Okay, so for five gallons per day, for four people, for 365 days, one full year of water, you need approximately 1,825 gallons of water stored up. Now, that's a lot of water. That's very heavy. Where would you store that? How would you store that? Now, the second option, okay? Dire emergency water preparedness calls for limiting water use to as little as possible for covering only drinking needs and minimal wash needs, which amounts to two gallons of drinking water per day for four people with one gallon of water use allowance for cleaning. This totals three gallons of water per day for four people. Times that by 365 will amount to 1,095 gallons of water for a year for four people at the use of only three gallons of water per day. So that's approximately 1,100 gallons of water. Okay, still, that's a whole lot of water. Option number three. This is extreme dire emergency. Calls for extreme water limitation for survival only. This would amount to half a gallon of drinking water per person per day for a family of four. And this is two gallons of drinking water per day only. No water set aside for washing pots and preparing food and or washing the body. I will get into brushing teeth and managing that along with washing your body in this video, Lord willing. So... Under extreme dire emergency, for water enough for a full year, for four people, you would need about 750, 730 to 750 gallons of water only. That is still a lot of water to store. But bear in mind that this is not going to be comfortable if you can't wash, etc. But you can drink it and it will keep you alive. So for minimal comfort... As a prep, a family of four will need to at least store approximately 1,800 gallons of water for a use rate of five gallons of water per day for all four people, not five gallons of water per person for a full year. Five gallons of water per day for four people for one full year is 1,800 gallons of water. Now. Whenever I had put this together and realized this, I was led just one day by the Holy Spirit to get get ready water-wise. Because I don't live near a freshwater stream. And the Lord done showed me 
and it's on my channel, that we're going to lose power across this entire nation. It will be systematically shut down. Systematically shut down. It looks like it was planned. Like when The Lord showed me a prophetic Holy Spirit dream. I did the video on it. It's on my channel. The link to it will be in the comments section below. Um, I already know we're going to go without water. Power will be cut off. And here's what kicks me every time. And I seem very upset maybe. Or it's because I'm very passionate about this. Because I am very concerned. Very concerned. The compassion of the Holy Spirit and the Lord in my heart. I'm just, I feel compassion and concern and worry for people in general. But especially my brothers and sisters. You see, most likely most of you know that. When we lose power, and we will, that water won't be coming through the taps. There'll be no water running out of your faucets. But what breaks my heart and just astounds me is how truly way too many people have no idea. They don't comprehend the reality that when the power goes, so does the water. They don't, they don't realize that all these water, tra you know, water plants, treating plants, I almost said water trance, all these water treating plants, all these water facilities run on power to actually pump the water through the pipes, and they don't realize it. Too many people don't know. Man, I look crazy. <laughs> but they don't know, and they're not preparing. And so they hear of the warnings of EMP this and war that and cyber attack this and, you know, p power outages, problems and whatnot, load shedding, rollouts and whatever. And they're like, they're not even thinking. A lot, of, a lot of people aren't even thinking about how this connects to water. And you don't live very long without water. And then on top of that Holy Spirit dream the Lord gave me about how we're going to lose power across the entire nation. The Lord gave me a follow-up Holy Spirit dream about a time when there's the water itself. It's going to be cut off, specifically. So that either is going to happen before the power is cut off or after it's restored, after some unknown time where there is no power and no water. But the Lord showed me there's going to be a time where they're going to cut off the water and they're going to claim that it's, it's due to health concerns, contaminant issues. And it's going to be sudden and no one is going to be the wiser. People are going to be caught off guard. People, listen, in, in the dream the Lord gave me, people were drinking fluids from canned goods. They were so desperate for fluid. The stores were ransacked for everything. Any fluid that could be drunk, people were getting sick and dying. It was chaos. It was bad. And so, I know that this is coming. I know it. The Lord doesn't have to convince me. I know it. And all I can do is at least talk about what the Lord has shown me and share it with you so that some of you who, who believe in the Lord and Holy Spirit, supernatural power of God, and who know me, for example, my, my past, if you know and you've been watching me and you've been listening to the dreams and the Holy Spirit visions the Lord's been giving me, and you've, you've seen how various things have come to pass, massive major events that the Lord showed me has come to pass, you would know. You know what? Wouldn't hurt to have some extra water. Wouldn't hurt to be prepared. To be a wise virgin. Okay, so understanding that for a family of four people, needing water for a full year would require 1,800 gallons of water. So anytime people talk about water storage, lots of people eventually end up thinking they have to buy those 55-gallon drums, those big blue buckets. There's other alternatives, and they're far more cheaper. Because back in 2015, 2016, it was about 40 to 60 bucks for a 55-gallon drum to hold water. Now, they're anywhere between 130 to 250 260 dollars a piece. And that price isn't coming down anytime soon. So, how many buckets or not buckets, but barrels, 55-gallon drums, are you going to need to acquire approximately 2,000 gallons of water for four people? Too many. The price would be too much, especially if you're strapped for money like many of us are. So I got to thinking, and the Lord led me to do something. I got a pool. Now, I figured 
I would need a pool that would be about 10, in, 10 feet wide by 30 inches high because that would hold 1,718 gallons. That's almost 1,800 gallons. So if I get that pool, I would have literally a year's worth of water just sitting there in front of, like in front of everybody's face, like under our noses, just right there. That's just, that is a very cheap way to get up to a year's worth of water for four people. And if you're not four people, then you're better off. But understand that there are cheaper ways to get water and you should have multiple backups. So have a pool if you can. If not, listen, listen, there's other things you can do. So for my family, I have a pool and my children, we, we thoroughly enjoy it. It's wonderful. But I have in the back of my mind, this is most likely going to service my family for when there is no power and or straight up no water. In addition, I have other contingencies you can say. You see, you can store water. Of course, you can buy them by the gallon, but I would warn you against doing that. Why? Because I had begun storing up water and um, even I had reused some milk gallons and because you can put some bleach, let it soak in some hot water, and scrub it out, and clean it, reuse it, blah, blah, there you go. But I found that after nine months to 12 months, guaranteed, each and every single gallon, typical milk jug gallon, busted on me. And I was so glad that I stored all that in storage and not in my home because I have wooden floors and I do. It was insane. They all ruptured. They are completely disposable. They are not worth anything. But if you want to store water, like say some in your wall, in your room, or in underneath your kitchen sink, or whatever, use juice jugs. If you buy apple juice, any kind of um, oh, Hawaiian punch, different juices, use the juice. Then clean it and refill it. You can go through the pain of uh, bleaching them all out or whatever you want to do. But even if you don't bleach it out, if you just clean it, soap and water, rinse it off, rinse it off really good, then refill it. Understand that even if it's not perfectly sanitary, and even if the water has sat for two years or three years, it doesn't go bad. It doesn't suddenly, magically not, you know, continue to be water. It's still water. It becomes deoxygenated, it becomes flat water. So the solution to that is to simply pour some out the bottle, let the air be in the bottle, seal it shut, and shake the crap out of it. Basically, you reoxygenate it. But if it's not perfectly sanitary, like if it hasn't been stored perfect, and it's still a clear liquid, there's no black in it, or orange, or green, or whatever, run it through your filters, and then purify it. You can add some bleach, or boil it. Or you can purify it, for, sanitize it first, make it potable first, but then run it through your filters. That way you keep your filters clean. Right? So, don't worry about if you've cleaned the jars good enough or not. Do a good job and store water. Have excess water within hand's reach of, for you and your family. Have water. Another alternative. Um, if your house doesn't have gutters, and there's certain points where your roof is designed to where the water runs off real hard in certain areas, buy you two and three and four and eight or whatever extra brand new trash cans. The ten, twenty dollar ones, thirty gallon plus. Stack them and store them. I know the plastic that they use to make these particular trash cans aren't necessarily food grade, but it sure is better than nothing. It sure is better than dying of thirst. And I've learned a lot from the old gals down here in the south. I'm in, the, I'm in Louisiana. I'm in the south. And so we live in hurricane territory. And I've learned when hurricanes come in, them old gals, man, they're like, grab your trash cans, grab your trash cans, hose them down and fill them up. And I'm like, what? You mean to tell me you're going to drink trash juice water? Like, what? I'm telling you right now, them ladies would tell me, <coughs> 
when you're dying of thirst, you're going to be glad to have that trash water, you know. Um, it's a matter of just getting the water. You can handle sanitizing it, filtering it, and everything else later. You can make it potable, but you've got to have the water to begin with, right? Not to be so, ew, that's trash water, you know, ew, and it came out of a hose. You know, don't worry about that. Don't worry about it. A stack you some brand new ones and wait. And so when things get bad and they cut that water off, you're going to be able to gather rainwater every single time it rains and design it in a way where you can fill it up and then add another one right behind it to catch the rest of that water as it rains. Now, if you have gutters, you might want to consider making sure you are familiar with the ability to simply divert them and or if you have to cut them a section to actually be able to get that water diverted and put into a water cistern. They're pretty expensive. It's um, You can get 300 gallon containers, 900 plus. You're gonna pay, you're gonna pay some, you're gonna, you're gonna pop down at least a grand. You're gonna pay some money. I got me a little pool. It's not a massive pool. It's very easy to maintain. It's very easy. It is 10 feet by 30 inches. And it costed me, with tax and shipping and handling, $176. That's it. It was $159.99. And I got it um, April 15th, this past April. And, and my children enjoy it, and I don't mind it. It's easy to clean, and I've learned the pool chemistry. And one, one additional thing I'd like to tell you. Um, people are planning on using bleach to sanitize their water. That's great and fine and dandy. One issue, though. Bleach, chlorine, basically the same thing, doesn't work very well in water that has high alkalinity, high pH. The higher the pH in the water, the less that chlorine is effective. The less germs that bleach is going to kill. I know, and a lot of people, I mean, it's like people don't know that or something. It's weird, or maybe you do, but listen, many people don't know that. I only know it because my tap water here is so pH, like the alkalinity is outrageous. It's sky high. It's so alkaline. The pH is so high. Um, I went to our local stores here and no one is selling any pH, you know, um, down stuff. Not numeric acid, nothing to bring the pH and alkalinity down. And I started researching, why does that even matter? Because the chlorine won't even be as effective. You're going to have lots of bacteria in your water, and people are going to get sick, probably catch bladder infections, kidney infections, and probably go septic if that doesn't get addressed and realized early enough. This happened to my son when he was 10. He went swimming with my friends. They had their children. Um, I went swimming in that pool a lot, a lot years ago. We'd always, always swim, and it was great. Thing is, is um, she usually would shock it all the time. Apparently, she didn't shock it or something. My son went swimming with her children, and then it didn't take but not even a week, and my son was, was suffering with severe diarrhea really bad, and then he called me up. I was at work, and he's letting me know, hey, Mom, there's blood in, in the toilet, blah, 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 blah. I had, to, I had to leave. I had to leave work and take him to the ER, and I'm glad I did when I did because, listen, I was informed that if I hadn't taken him in, at that time, if I would have waited another day, he would have died. His fever was sky high beyond belief. He lost a lot of blood. His kidneys were infected beyond belief. He, he was going into septicemia. And the kind of infection he had is typically found in pool water. It's a fecal matter, microscopic fecal matter from people's butts, basically. Swimming in booty soup. When the pool water is not sanitized, the chlorine isn't working, there is no chlorine, when the pH is too high or whatever, Understand, you're swimming in booty soup. Yes. And I'm saying it as nicely as I can, right? Booty soup. Fecal matter. And that can get into your urethra, into your bladder, and go up your kidneys, and it can kill you. So, understand, a lot of people, and it blows my mind, to the mass majority of people, don't understand that if, you're, if your tap water, or whatever water it is that you're storing up, is too high in pH, alkalinity, you add bleach to that, it's not going to be that effective. Now, what do they do to bring the pH down? They add acid. They make it more balanced, right? And that makes the chlorine more effective. So they already add those chemicals to our drinking water. So what if you add it to your pool? 
we already drink it from our tap. Even if you run your tap water through a filter, you're still drinking those chemicals that bring the pH down in order for the chlorine to be effective, and that way you're not drinking biohazardous materials, toxins. So it just blows my mind that a lot of people don't know that, and they think that if they just store bleach, they're going to be good to go. If the case is that your pH, your water, and your, is more alkaline than it should be, or more, the pH is higher, you're better off boiling it if you don't have bleach. Because at least boiling it will kill the contaminants. If bleach won't be as effective because your pH is too high, boiling is the next option. Now, will you be able to treat your water once stuff hits the fan? Or are you going to be able to have access to seasoned wood for serious boiling and cooking needs? Or can you store up enough propane? Alcohol stove? There's various fuels that you can use. Various fuels you can use to heat up food and or boil water. Get those things. They will be sky high come soon. They're high already. Get them now before it's too late. But get storing water. Use juice bottles. Sanitize them as best as you can and load them up with water. And you can store them. You can store them under your bed. You can store them in cabinets or closets, utility closets, your, your, any kind of um, pantry, storage room, caban, basement. Make sure they're sealed properly um, and stack them and store them. Get you 55-gallon drums if you want to. Get you a pool. Get extra trash cans. Have a well dug up. Those are, it's not cheap. I can't afford that. Find alternative methods now so that you can have water because there's no telling when this, this mess is going to happen and we're going to be out of power. No water. And or a massive place in the nation may be hacked <clears throat> and then there's simply be no running water and or and a, I, I hate to say certain words I can't say certain words on here I do believe it is part of an agenda to actually make it to where they shut water off in various areas regional areas and claim it's contaminated yeah some sort of um, terrorist type attack or something I don't know all the details. I know what the Lord showed me and that they're going to claim it was contaminated. And there will be no water for a time over a large area. I have already done the video. I get into details. And the Lord helped me to decipher that particular dream so I can get more information out of it to share with you. I did the video. The video link is going to be in the comments below as well to the Holy Spirit dream the Lord gave me about how we're not going to even have water. Get ready. Please get ready. So if you're a family of four, you need about 1,800 gallons of water just for one year. Now, I'm not saying that if you store up 1,800 gallons, that's all you need to do. Be able to gather rainwater so that you can have extra. You're going to want to feed your plants, or you might you're going to want to have like a full-on official actual bath. Yes, let me get into the bathing and the brushing of the teeth. Thank you, Lord. How to brush your teeth whenever there's absolutely no excess of water available and you're in dire straits and you're conserving water. Um, to be honest with you, and I mean, I'm being honest with you, but I mean to be more forthright, vulnerable, and just straightforward. Um, for years now, many years, I brush my teeth with peroxide. Some people, that might freak them out. Yes. Now, can I afford to exclusively use only the food grade peroxide? No, it's too much. Too, it costs too much. Um, I use the cheap, yes, the little brown bottle peroxide, yes. Um, it's wonderful. It, it prevents infections. Like, if you're like me, I go to floss sometimes because my teeth are tight back to back. Sometimes I have to push up with the floss hard to get through my the cracks of my teeth and then it pops in my gum and it'll separate my gum sometimes from my tooth and that could lead to an infection yes so in order to avoid effect infection i use peroxide i brush afterwards i rinse off with peroxide and make sure and i brush with my brush with peroxide now you might want to uh, smear a little bit of anti-fluoride toothpaste onto it and add that baking soda is wonderful for brushing. You're not strong. You don't need a lot or you'll burn your gums. 
Yes, I know. But I'm telling you right now, if there's no excess water available and you're trying to make do and it's in dire straits, stuff has hit the fan, there's no running water, it wouldn't be a bad idea to have peroxide because everybody's going to want to brush their teeth and they're going to want to brush their teeth multiple times a day. Do you ha will, will you have the excess water to do that? No. Peroxide. It's relatively cheap, still available. Go and get you many of them, as many as you can. Get them. Yes, over time, peroxide loses its effectiveness. Um, if it sits too long, say two, three years or so, depending on how fresh the bottle is when you buy it, um, it turns into water. It loses its effectiveness. Um, one way to know if you're good to go using the peroxide um, is, you know how when you pour it out and it, it basically oxidizes, it turns white and foamy and, well, if you squirt that in your mouth and it's doing that, you're good to go. It helps. Now listen, peroxide is a, is a mouth, debrid mouth debridal agent. Okay. Um, it's used by, it has been for decades upon decades, used by dentists as a, a mouth debriding agent. Meaning it separates, okay, so when they go in and they clean your teeth, they, they do zzz all around your teeth, right? They're separating possible microfi microfilm, biofilm, maybe even tartar, depending on how bad, you know. They'll, they'll go in and separate, get that out in between your gums and your teeth so that your gums can land on your teeth and re-solidify, sealing your teeth, sealing to your teeth so nothing, no bacteria gets in. Well, that's what the debridal agent is for. It helps strip that biofilm. Peroxide. It's a wonderful, wonderful use. Very, very helpful. And good for your teeth. Now, don't drink it. And so, you could use that during a stuff hits the fan situation where there's no water. You still have liquid to brush with and rinse with. Okay? Um, you could, if you want to, you could... Um, dilute it with water but that would defeat the whole point of let's keep our water we need to drink our water to live right so but that with that's a wonderful alternative that myself and my family are planning on using in that scenario which shall come to pass and so even to this day and for many years now that's what i use that's what i do also it whitens your teeth it's great okay so as far as body washing okay oh man I didn't want this video to be long. <sighs> Have you ever known someone, like, really close to you that went homeless? I know someone. He passed away, but while I was living in Texas, someone um, close to me became homeless down here in Louisiana. And for quite some time, I didn't even know about it, about eight months or so. When I came to find out, of course, I made a trip down here and got him a place to stay and got him some medical help because while down here to visit him he had been living in a van and then he was living out in the bushes before that and he, he upgraded to a van an abandoned van no running water, nothing 